Ranking number one on Google is so important for your local business, but most viral number one overnight videos are for blogs, irrelevant keywords, or they're just plain clickbait. I got to number one on Google for a fairly competitive local keyword in three months. Documented the whole process on YouTube and I spent less than $20 on backlinks. I still got to number one. If you're sick of wasting your time on those other videos, then stick around because I hope this video will help you get to number one as well. And let me just start off with a quick disclaimer, like anybody that promises they can get you to number one is probably a liar or a scammer. And if you wanna know why, drop a comment below and I'll fully explain the process. But my goal in this video is just to help you get higher up the ranks. And if you're struggling, you can actually just send me an email, sam at thencandesigns.com. And let's take a look and see if I can help you get a little bit higher up. But now let's get into it by talking about what actually matters for local SEO. Again, I'm talking to local business owners or people that do local SEO for their clients. I'm not talking about national SEO. This is for businesses that serve local customers. The most important thing is the Google business profile. That's the map pack that typically shows up first in the search results. Now, in case you didn't know, the Google business profile can actually be influenced by on-page signals. As you can see, it's the second most important factor. And so if you're just figuring out how to get your Google business profile dialed in, then I encourage you to check out my Google business profile masterclass link in the description. It's pretty long 50 minutes, but it, it's very thorough. And if you need help getting better reviews, which is the third most important signal for the Google business profile, then please check out my newer video on how to get more and better reviews for your Google business profile, including how to handle one star reviews. But since on page signals, can heavily influence the Google business profile, we need to focus on our website, which is the second most important factor for local SEO. In fact, I never even touched my Google business profile while I was working on getting my website to number one. What matters for getting your local business website to rank? It's two things, relevancy and authority. Let's focus just on the relevancy. So we're still on number two, your website. Relevancy is telling Google what you actually do, telling Google what SEO bucket you belong in. I can't tell you how many times I've started working with clients and their very simple things like their SEO title or their H1 tags. I know these aren't really like the nitty gritty parts of SEO, but if you're not in the right SEO bucket, then there's no need to start to do the more advanced stuff. You have to start at square one. So once you make sure that you are, you've done everything as far as showing up in the relevancy category, then it's time to worry about the third factor that is actually important for local SEO, which is authority. And all authority is, is locally relevant backlinks and industry relevant backlinks. And that's pretty much it. If you're interested on my take on local citations, which are becoming less and less important for local SEO as the years go on, there's a video in the description as well that discusses my take on local citation. But now let's discuss the process. How did I get to number one? And more importantly, how can you emulate that process so you can get a little bit closer to number one? So the first thing I did was keyword research. And so you can see uh, in the first steal my local SEO strategy, uh, the main thing I covered was keyword research. And what you're looking for is making sure that you have a high search volume, which we had 390 here, a lower keyword difficulty, which is 19%, and a CPC uh, that's not zero and is still, that's competitive, but not too high. And what I mean by that is usually over five and less than 10 makes me happy. Now, just to take a little bit more time to talk about these different numbers, search volume for local search results are just low, okay? That's actually like a pretty medium number, 390. Most of my clients are between 10 and like 200 for all of their services keywords for the search volume, all right? And remember, keyword difficulty is just a guess by the SEO tool. So there's no way we can really validate how valid that number is. So don't stick too much to that. Just know that we're gonna use that as a general framework for picking the primary keyword 
for each service for your business. And if you need some help with that, there's a link in the description to my absolute, or sorry, my keyword guide for absolute beginners or something like that. I don't know, you'll figure it out. Now, the next thing that I did that I actually didn't talk a whole lot about in this video, but I actually audited my website and that's something that you should do as well. And if you want to see my full SEO audit process and even steal my SEO audit uh, check form, uh, checklist form, uh, I'm going to leave a link to a different video in the description. And if you go to your small biz SEO success .com, link in the description in case you weren't able to write that down really fast. You can sign up for my SEO newsletter and you'll get this little package of SEO goodies for free. It's completely free. Just got to give me your name and email. And in that, you'll get the SEO checkup form. So definitely check that out so you can audit your own site. In the second Steal My Local SEO Strategy video, we actually sat down and did a lot of competitor research. The first thing we did was we looked graphically at the websites, like from a human experience, what are people getting on these pages? And then we actually started to look at the technical SEO. We were looking at things like the SEO titles and we used a tool called Screaming Frog to pull in uh, the H1 tags, the meta descriptions, to really see what Google is expecting to put in this bucket. This is really helping us with the relevancy aspect because we wanted to make sure we were really fine tuned to show up in the SEO Bend Oregon bucket. From there, we created a content strategy, and I didn't spend too much time actually building out the web page, but I showed you the differences between the old version of the page and the new version of the page, and I explained why I did the things that I did, and hopefully that can give you some inspiration for what you should do as you go to make changes to the content on your website to hopefully increase your relevancy. Again, this isn't so much about getting you to rank higher, it's about getting you to show up in the right bucket. And then of course, I submitted the page to Google Search Console, so that way it would get indexed in its new state. In case you've never done that before, you just type in the full URL for the page up here in Google Search Console, and then uh, you can either hit test live URL and to make sure that the page is on Google, but I can already see the pages on Google. So you just need to click this request indexing button. Since we're already number one, I think we can leave it alone. After that, I started to monitor the site and slowly iterate when I noticed changes in our rankings. And I wanna show you one really important point. Now we're inside of SEMrush here using their position tracker, which is their SERP tracker. And I didn't have it turned on for the keyword, so it's kind of lying to us here. It wasn't unranked at this point. It was actually in the, the low 30s. And so when we finally made our changes, it popped up at 22. Uh, the next week it was still steady at 22, but then it dipped all the way down to 40 which sparked the number three video in the Steal My Local SEO Strategy. <laughs> what to do when your ranking suddenly drops, and you can see for uh, SEO Bend Oregon, uh, or at least for SEO Bend, you can see us going from 29th to 74th within a week. Pretty rough, huh? In the end, it ended up being a caching issue for the page, I believe, but it's a good video in case you ever have your ranking drop suddenly to review because I go over all the things that you should be going through to make sure that you can recover your ranking quickly. Unless, of course, you're not following the rules, then you're on your own. And then it was time to obtain some locally relevant and industry relevant backlinks. In this video, which was Steal My Local SEO Strategy number four, which ended up actually being the second most popular video on this channel with over 700 views, thank you, uh, loyal uh, viewers out there. I broke down the process of not only how I looked for industry and locally relevant backlinks for me, but I also did it for roofing just to give you a, another example. And so we're mostly looking at how to get listed in those listicles, which are usually like those 10 best blanks uh, in the area, right? And so that's the main thing we were looking at. So those were the free backlinks that we looked for. And then I tried to find some that I was willing to pay for. I basically came in with like a budget of $100. I said, I'm willing to spend $100 on some backlinks if I can, if I can get them. Uh, but most of the stuff was well over $100, which is actually pretty normal. And so I ended up finding this really crappy site that for $15 a year I could get posted on there. So I did that and I also did the locally relevant and the industry relevant ones. They were actually free, I just had to fill out profiles. And so if you've never done anything like that before, definitely go back to Steal My Local SEO Strategy number four and review that video because it's super helpful. There's not a lot of videos like that on YouTube right now, so I highly encourage you to check it out. And last but not least, I waited. 
I posted that last video about two months ago, and I've just kind of been sitting there and checking SEMrush every once in a while, seeing how we're doing, and noticing that we were trending in the right direction, so I didn't really feel a need to make any drastic changes. And so what do you think? Is it time to look at the results? So again, the Steal My Local SEO Strategy video came out at the end of January, and so around here is where we turned on the SERP tracking, and so that's where it popped up after we made our first changes. It dipped down here, and around here is where we picked up the backlinks. And so notice that we had kind of a little spiky jump up and down, and then we actually made it to the first page. It seemed very steady for a while. It started to go down. I got scared. But over time, we made it up to the top and on to uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, oh, no. Uh, yeah. In the last couple days, we just got to number one uh, for the first time. And so what does that look like? If I search SEO Bend, Oregon, you notice the map pack is what shows up first. And I still am showing up second in the map pack. Uh, in this area, and it does change on different parts of town. So that's something I want to point out is that the SERP changes depending on where you are and which keywords you use and also what device you use. When I look on my phone, I'm actually a little bit lower. You notice there's a people also ask section next, and then there's then can designs number one. If I search a similar keyword, which is SEO bend, I also show up second. Oh, I show up first on this one. Now, I literally searched this like 10 minutes ago and I was showing up second in the organic results and first in the map pack. So all that to say is that SERPs, which stands for search engine result pages, change all the time. And so what you can expect is this natural fluctuation uh, within a couple spots. But that real steady up and to the right only happens when you're giving your site love, that SEO care you need. So that might bring you to this question. How do I get these results, Sam? Well, of course, you could go to thencandesigns.com and hire my agency to do your SEO for you. But I feel like you might be more the DIY type, which I respect. And that's why I actually have a really big announcement right now. I don't even have a website to show you for this, but I've been working on localseoacademy.co. That's localseoacademy.co not .com, some digital marketing agency in South Carolina stole that from me. Somebody tell them I will give them money for that domain. But anyway, localseoacademy.co. By the time this video comes out, all that's going to be there is a contact form. Please go there, fill that out so you can get on the wait list. I'm planning on putting together a free local SEO course that I hope is better than most of the SEO courses out there because they don't really tell you how to do SEO. They just give you these vague ideas and these definitions. And so I want to make an SEO course that's actually good. And then of course, there'll be some more advanced courses, but it's going to be worth the money. So again, localseoacademy.co if you want to get on the wait list for that free local SEO course that's going to be better than most of the stuff out there. So now that you know how to reach the top of the organic search results, which are the blue links in Google, watch this video to master Google Maps SEO. My name is Sam Sarson, the owner of Then Can Designs in Bend, Oregon. Please subscribe to the channel if you found this video useful. Hit that like button so other people can see this, and I'll catch you in the next one.